If say the tales to say the tunes, storm and adventure, heat and cold. If schooners, islands and maroons, and buccaneers and buried gold. And all the old romance retold exactly in the ancient way. Can please, as me they pleased of old, the wiser youngsters of today. So be it, and fall on. If not, if studious youth his no longer crave, his ancient appetites forgot, Kingston or Ballantyne the Brave, or Cooper of the Wooden Wave, so be it also. And may I and all my pirates share the grave where these and their creations lie. So, today's video, if I can find my drink, is all about pirates. We've got a selection of typing games of a piratical nature, which I hope you should enjoy. I certainly enjoy typing them in. We're here for about half an hour or so. We've got exciting, swashbuckling naval battles. We've got tr navigating the trackless waste of the sea and searching for buried treasure. But first of all, let's have some rum. Oh, that's good. Can you feel it all the way down? I certainly can. Oh, so, shoot him with Tim with Bahartis, and let's set sail for adventure. Our first game is Drake's Return from Creating Political and Military Simulation Games on Your Micro by Mike Rose. This game represents a naval battle in Elizabethan times, the object being to sink the enemy fleet by gunfire or ramming before your flagship is sunk. The game is carried out on a board, generated a square at a time, Reports are given of encounters after your moves are made. The reply move generator is very simple. The enemy ships head straight for your flagship. The variables containing the ships are two arrays, holding each ship's X and Y position and condition. Another array is used to set up the display so that direct screen addressing is not used. The ship's positions are read into this and it is then printed bit by bit. The reply move generator is easily improved if you want to experiment. Another possible field for experimentation is the model itself as regards damage due to fighting. There is no random function as the game stands, and you may like to try adding one to make winning easier or impossible. Here are the dispositions of the ships. The E's represent the Spanish ships, E for enemy, E for Spain. We have our five ships. Ship number one is our flagship. Obviously we can shout very loud. Put caps lock on. Then we need to keep our flagship away from the enemy. Let's advance. Let's go northwest. Let's have ship two join in with us. Ship three as well. Ship four, let's have that move north. And let's have ship five move northwest. So the game then calculates the results. If no combat happens, press a key to continue. Pop. Here are the new dispositions of the ships. The Spanish are slowly moving towards our flagship. One is in advance. So let's keep moving forwards. We need to make sure we don't collide with each other. So sh it's interesting, the ships are ordered one to five, but we start on the right. So if you're not careful, give the ships the wrong order. That's a trick, I think, to make it more difficult. If a ship collides with, with another ship, they both sink. That includes you, both your ships ramming the enemy, or the enemy ramming themselves, or your ships ramming themselves. No, nothing, no combat as yet. So the Spanish are coming forward. Let's keep at it. Let's ever, everyone on the right flank move north-west. The two ships in the middle move north. And ship number five move northeast. Once you're in range, everyone fires at everyone else. Ship number one is for shooting at the enemy, shows ship two, shows ship three. Ship, the enemy has not fired back. Well, the enemy has fired back, possibly. It doesn't tell us. So ship number one is getting a bit close to the enemy, so we're going to go southwest. Ship number two is going to move east, as of, is the rest of the fleet to form a barrier between us and the enemy. 
So we all shoot each other. Ship number one is against the enemy. So is ship number two, it's attacked the enemy twice, two ships. So is ship three, ship four, and ship five. Everyone gets to shoot at everyone within range. That's how it works. The closer you are, the more damage you do. So, there's going to be some collisions soon, which is a bad thing. So what you need to do is ship one is going to stay where it is. Ship two is going to move north to keep engaging the enemy. Ship three is going to move out of the way. Ship four is going to stay where it is. And ship five is going to move forward to engage the enemy. So everyone's shooting. There's lots of smoke everywhere. Ship number two has attacked four times. Everyone's shooting everybody. Lots of cannon, lots of smoke, lots of blood and screaming and probably amputations. It's all very swashbuckling. So, there's a Spanish ship next to my flagship. If it hits me, I am dead. So I'm going to move out of the way. And I keep the rest of the fleet all moving south. We've not managed to stop the Spanish yet. This is a bad thing. They're going to convert us all and burn the Queen at the stake. Lots and lots of shooting. No, nothing much has changed. So again, the Spanish are next to my flagship, so I'm going to move south. There's like a running battle. Everyone else joins in. And let's see what we get. Everyone's shooting at everybody. Here are the dispositions. So ship number one is next to the Spanish. I can't go any further south because I'm at the edge of the sea. So let's try going east. Let's have everyone go east. I hope we can sink the Spanish in time. And the Spanish have rammed me. Unfortunately, in the game as written, the Spanish are as implacable as the Terminator. Let's have no to another game. What you can do, you can print out the strengths of the enemy ships to get the subscripts right. So you start at a value of 1 and it goes down. So ship, enemy ship 1 is 98% strong. Now is it that the 1? No. Print E. Excuse my, excuse my typing. So ship number two is 68% strength. Let's try what the Spanish ship number three is. 92. And the final ship. So we have sunk one Spanish ship. That's the one that rammed us. One of the ships was 32% damaged. And essentially, there's no way I believe you can win this game as written. So we're going to improve it as the game encourages, encourages us to and have another go. I've made a number of improvements to Drake's Return. The most obvious being at this stage, the colour. It's at, We're at sea. Let's make things blue. I've gone for a blue border and a cyan background. Not a blue background, otherwise you couldn't see. Let's make everything go white. I've just spotted the typo on the display, the display that says simple, not simple. I've not fixed that. It's my fault, not the codes. Let's get into it. I noticed that there wasn't enough sea room in the game, so you couldn't have a good running battle. You got stuck against the side very quickly. I've increased the size of the map to 15 by 15. We see the number of places changed, the array of locations changed, your position at calculation, and where to start. Originally, we started at 100, which was far too high up. I then changed it to start at the bottom of the screen, but that was then really boring because it took ages to get anywhere. I've also changed how fighting works. Rather than everyone fighting everyone else, I've changed it so at the start of each turn your firing counter is one, after firing it drops by a half, after firing twice it's down to zero, once it's zero you can't fire anymore. When you calculate the damage you do, that's then divided, the number of times you've fired factors into it. So if you fired once, it's your firepower divided by 5, if you fired twice, divided by 10, otherwise you don't fire at all. 
So originally it was your file pad divided by 20, and then you couldn't see anything. So let's get started. The flagship is on the extreme east of the map, so let's move it up to the northwest. Let's bring the rest of my ships in with it. Let's everything go northeast. And let's try and defend England from the Spanish. Nothing happened, press a, key to, press a key to continue. Off we go again. It's a little bit slow, it's written in basic. So what we'll do, in terms of time, let's increase the speed double. That's a bit better. So we're not, we we're not, not got all day, have we? We've got things to do. There are other pirate action games to type in and enjoy. So again, we're moving the ships closer together. No one's in range yet. Remember, once you're in range, you fire. Once you've fired twice, you can't fire anymore. So the Spanish are quite nicely spread out. So am I. So let's try and keep my ships together. Everyone's going to move to the northeast. The idea is we're going to if if every ship can fire twice and only twice, if I can gather up all my ships together, we can all fire at the one ship and it can only fire back twice. So five ships firing twice is ten. One ship firing back is two. Originally, everyone fired at everyone else, and you your strength factored into it, so there was no actual way you could actually win, which wasn't ideal. So ship number one, let's go west. Ship number two, east, we're now going to join together. Ship number three is going to join them. Ship four and ship five are going to try to hold off one Spanish ship. Ship four is round a ship, because I'm not a very good admiral. Ship 1, 2, 3, and 5 have fired though, which is good. So 4 against 4. So if we're clever, which I'm not, we're going to try and keep everyone together. So moving ship 1 south, moving ship 2 south, ship 3 south east, and let's move ship 5 south east as well. That's going to be in a long running battle with the enemy. A nice lumbering Spanish galleon. So let's see where we are now. Three against three and one against one. So ship number one is going to go south. We're going to go southwest because we're going to concentrate our fire on the leading Spanish ships. And ship number five is going to go southeast and he's going to try and get him involved, get him in the action. Four against four. That's me inhaling. I did change the graphics for the uh, C. I tried underscore, but that just looked weird. Uh, I couldn't be bothered to do custom graphics. So ship number one, let's have him go south. Ship number two goes south. Ship number three go east. The closer you are, the better. Ship number five, let's have you go east as well. Try and join the Donny Brook. Oh, we have sunk an enemy. We have sunk one of the Spanish galleons. God save the Queen. If they said that back then. Bahari and St. George, that sort of thing. So it's a nice big gap now. So let's try and keep things together. Let's move ship number one west, ship number two northwest, number three northwest, and number five southeast. Concentrate our forces. And we've rammed our ship. We've lost two and five because I'm, I'm a terrible admiral. One is supporting severe damage. That is not so good. I think we're back to even Stevens now. Three against three. No, it's three against two, and our flagship is severely damaged. I don't think I've done very well at this game. But it's certainly a bit more exciting, and we've been destroyed. But it's more exciting. We've sunk some ships. On to the next one. Our next pirate fun takes us to Stimulating Simulations by C.W. Engel, published in 1977. This is Lost Treasure. You've landed somewhere on an island that has treasure, woods, Mountains, a cave, a bluff, an oak tree, and, of course, seawater all around. Your objective is to find the treasure as quickly as possible without falling into the shark-infested water. You can move north, east, south or west one square at a time. Your compass, however, is not very accurate. There is only an 80% chance that you will move in the intended direction. There's a 20% chance you will move diagonally to the left or the right. Each time that you move, you will receive feedback regarding the type of terrain on which you are travelling. If you fall into the sea, you'll be placed back on the square occupied prior to your unfortunate move, unless you disturb the sharks. The chance that the sharks will eat you the first time you fall in is 20%. The second time you fall in, 
the chance is 70%. The third time you fall in it will be your last. Since you have a map of the island, you'll be able to t do determine your approximate position. For example, if you're in the woods and you move east two squares and find that you are in mountains, then you are most likely located in the northeast corner of the island. The reason you can't be sure of the exact location is that you may have veered off to the right or left. With practice, you should be able to find the treasure in less than 15 moves. Let's have a look. We're in the open, so we could be anywhere. We could be on any edge of the island, the north, south, east or the west. So any move you make might kill us. So let's try going west to start with. And fell into the ocean. Eaten by a shark. That's not so good. No, not quite in the shark. Okay, we're not dead yet. So going west was bad. Let's go east. We're in the mountains. Okay, so there are two places we could be. If I go south, I should be in the open. If I go east, I'll either be in the woods or in the open. Appropriate. Okay, so I know roughly where I am. If I go north, I mean, it should be in the clear, in the open, sorry. I've gone east, I'm now in the mountains. Okay, so I'm not quite sure where I am now, but in the mountains. So if I head north from the mountains, I'm in the ocean again. In by sharks. Okay, play again. This time be extra careful. I'm near an oak tree. This is excellent news because there is only one oak tree on the island at the extreme south border. So if I go north, I should be in the mountains. Yes, I am. If I go west, I should be in the open. And if I go north, I should be... On my way to the treasure in five. I'm a very good pirate. One more go. Where am I now? I'm in the open. Not very helpful. Let's head south. I'm still in the open. I head south. I'm in the ocean. Perhaps it's in the dark. Not quite sure. Um, you, you think you'd see mountains ahead of you. So going south was a bad thing. Let's go west. Maybe along the beach. Nope. I'm in the ocean again. Okay, it might be the far southern end of the island. So let's try going north. And I should. I'm on a bluff. Again, excellent news. There's only one bluff on the island. That's on the western shore. If I go east in the open, north should be in the mountains. And then a few steps east, providing you don't get lost. Treasure in 10. It's a good little game. It works. It types in. Works quite nicely. And it, what the aim of the this book is very good because it gives you a ways of modifying your program. So basically, I'm not going to do it because I've got other games to look at. But they give you minor modifications, which are a couple of line changes, such as the probability of the first shark attack, how big the grid is, and the lines to change, how many woods there are, how many mountains there are, how to change the location of landmarks, where the treasure is, how you change where the movement error is, and how much you disturb the sharks. That's quite easy to change one line. More advanced things to play with. You can vary the number and the amount of the treasure. You can add water and or food to maintain your energy levels. The treasure could be moving. You could move the direction of mod modify the direction of movement more. There could be quicksand. You could have random landmarks that are not on the map. And you can the treasure could be randomly placed before each hunt. We're not doing those today, but it's a nice simple game and it works really well. On to the next. We're back with stimulating simulations for our third game, Nautical Navigation. Our task is to navigate a sailboat that has an electronic direction finder to three different islands in the South Pacific. Yes, there were pirates in the South Pacific and they, they are allowed to use electricity. You do not have to dock at the islands, but only come close enough to make a visual sighting. The minimum sighting distance will vary from 5 to 10 miles, depending on weather conditions. You'll need graph paper and an inexpensive protractor that I don't have in order to plot your course. Each turn, you'll receive information about your bearings in degrees from each of the three islands. For convenience, you will also receive the bearings from the ship to each of the islands. If you know the bearings from two of the three islands, you can locate the ship. However, there are some errors in the reading, so you might want to use all three. If the bearing from island 1 is 317, the bearing to island 1 is 138, the bearing from island 2 is 230, the bearing to the island is 50 degrees. After you locate your position, you must determine your heading and the length of time you wish to remain on this course. 
Since you're a sailboat, your speed will depend on your direction with respect to an easterly wind. In order to make any progress towards the east, you must tack at either 45 degrees or 315 degrees. The speed of the sailboat, as a function of its direction, is shown in the graph below. The fastest speed of 10 miles an hour is achieved when the boat is perpendicular to the wind, running either directly north, 90 degrees, or south, 270 degrees. When the boat is running with the wind directly behind it, its speed is about half the maximum speed, or 5 miles an hour. Once you determine the heading, you must determine the length of time you wish to remain on the heading, or the length of time you wish to travel before the next navigational check. The speed at about 70 degrees is about 6.7 miles an hour. In 10 hours, you'd travel 67 miles. Of course, the wind speed will vary. You may wish to make one or two navigational checks on a long run. You can visit the three islands in any order. You must compute the angle and time so the end of a run is within 5 to 10 miles of an island. Since visibility conditions vary, you may have to wait for a turn to allow sighting conditions to improve. Your rating as a navigator will depend on the number of navigational checks required and the amount of time for the trip. A good sailor should be able to complete the trip with a rating close to 100. Here's the map. You can see the approximate position of the boat. Island number one is 100 miles due north of us. Island number two is 400 miles due east. Island number three is 100 miles south and 100 miles east. Wind comes from the east. Let's have a go. So this is nautical navigation. Our first navigational check. The bearing from island 1 is 258. To get there, we need to go on a bearing of 78 degrees. Bearing from 2 is 181. To get there, a bearing of 1. And the bearing from 3 is 148. And the bearing to it is 328. So two islands are to the north. Or one, one straight north. One is east and a little bit north, and the other one is northwest. Looking at the map, that is a load of old ship's biscuit. Well, bearing up, island number one should be north, island number two should be east, and island number three should be southwest. So let's care that. Now, bearing up, yeah, this, these numbers don't make any sense. Anyway. Let's try and go north. Better say straight north is zero. And let's go 10 hours saying north. And not much has changed. We've sailing for 10 hours, not much has changed. The reason for that is when you say zero, what you're actually saying is sail directly into the wind, which is from the east. So you don't actually move at all. It doesn't tell you, it just doesn't work. So 90 is north, which is just confusing and wrong. So let's sell 90 degrees bearing from the wind, which is north, when I don't know why you would do that, for 10 hours. OK, so we've sailed north for 10 hours and... Island number two is still slightly to the north. Let's try another. Let's try again. Eighty degrees for one hour. So we're saying for twenty hours. Uh, bearing from one is twenty-one. Bearing from two is that. Let's sail north for another hour, maybe. So the numbers are changing slowly. Uh, let's try north again for another hour. So island number one is moving. So that's a bit to the a bit to the northwest, which would be 120 perhaps. Yeah, these numbers don't make any sense. It's, why would you do it this way? Yeah, I don't like this at all. It's just, it's just confusing. The numbers don't make any sense. So let's sell, for example, 325, which is the bearing to get to I number one. Let's sell that for 10 hours. So sell that for 10 hours, and it's slightly changed. Let's sell 327. Let's put, a, let's put 10,000 hours in, just be stupid. It should change. And it doesn't. We sell for 10,000 hours. And nothing has changed. I'm going to stop and see where, where we actually are. 
So x is 185. So we've not moved that far to the west. y is 300. So we're actually pretty close to island number 1. So we need to be slightly south and slightly east. So south would be 270 for, let's say, two hours. And we should be slightly east. We can't go directly east. So let's try 45 degree angle for three hours. And let's now try the north minus 44. There, 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 there. 315 for three hours. We are cheating, by the way, because I'm not sure this. Ah, that now works. So we've visited island number one because we've hit the actual right destination. The bearings were of no use whatsoever. So I've completely revamped the trigonometry system. I noticed that when you moved, when you move north, you actually move east and west, and when you move south, you actually move the other way around. Same with east and west, just did, just didn't work. So I changed all that. Speed didn't work either. The whole relative bearing nonsense just didn't work. So I so spent a lot of time faffing around and got it all working. And it actually seems to work fine. So what I've now got on the desk next to me is a piece of paper. I've drawn a basic map. And I've got a 360 degree protractor. I've taken my initial bearings from the three islands. One of the islands is slightly wrong. So I can tell that I'm in a certain area of the sea. I, I am at position X around 185 perhaps, and Y, I've lost the chart here to the screen, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 150, 161, maybe 170, maybe 180. So from here, I will be editing this for length, but and at the end of it, we'll get an action replay. So to start with, we need to go to three islands. Island number two is far to the east. I've also changed it. So when you go too close to the wind, rather than not telling you, it'll actually beep to give you a warning that you've done. No, you can't do that. So we need to go north to start with. So let's try and go straight north. And let's try and go for, let's say, 10 hours. Because it's about 100 miles. And let's see what we get. So. Bearing from number one is 209. So I'll get the protractor out, put it on the map, position it on number one, position it matching the cursor. So from is 209. So we've actually... Yeah, so it's still a little bit to the north. Let's draw a line from there. Because the tricky thing is we our heading is never quite exact for some reason. And... Bearing for number two is 278. Let's put the old... Yeah, look, that's my printer. Bless it. I use the printer for the photocopying. So I don't want to keep doing this map. So it's here. So we we're definitely moved north, which is good. We're actually pretty close. So I believe we are 10, 20, 30 miles south and 20 miles west. I'll take the third bearing just to be sure. Bearing for island three is three two four. After this, I will be speeding up, so don't you don't you be worried. Three two four, but this is doing it properly as the game wants you to do. When I went to yeah, it's, it's one of them. Yes, it's that one there. Uh, okay, so I need, I'm thirty miles south and twenty miles east. So let's go. It says twenty nine. So let's try and do thirty, and it's about. 30 times 20, it's about 20 miles. So let's do four hours. So we are now 36 degrees away. I'm going to cheat a little bit by using some of the bearings. We don't know which ones are false. Let's just double check very quickly. Not necessarily to draw in the line, we get an idea. So from 360, the key of the game is to get within visual range. So from Island 1, it is 216. So we're definitely creeping up to it. And from island number 
3, which is further away, let's say it's, it's 330. I do like this nice round protractor. I popped through the window to get it. 330. Oh, we're very close now. We are very close. The thing to remember is... Yeah, we're about 10 miles south. Cut lock. Skip to the end. We've now really reached our third island. We've done it. We've done appallingly badly. 227 hours, 34 checks, minus 170. I've added a feature at the end so you can see how you actually did and where you actually went called Action Replay. So yes, well, you will see an Action Replay. So I've done a nice little map of the sea. Three islands marked with the X. Island number one is blue, which we're just about to reach on the first few goes. Island number two is far to the east and island number three is to the south. So we reached island number one and then had to do a long run to the south. We're now slowly trying to beat our way into the wind. The issue you always have is going into an easterly wind when you want to go east is difficult. You have to tack. Lots and lots of tacking. So here I'm slowly approaching, creeping around. And I made a long run. I've reached island number three. So now I make a long run to the northeast, and then another long run to the northeast, checking my bearings as we go. And then I'm slowly doglegging towards island number two, checking my bearings using a protractor, pen and pe pen and pencil, pencil and ruler, sorry. Just like the old days. I went to a museum and they showed how to do this with aeroplanes, which was interesting and also very pointless because aeroplanes are very fast. Boats are quite slow. So little zigzags here. And I'm very nearly at island number two, where I've won. Thank you for watching. Our final game for today is Treasure Island from the Spectrum Book of Games, published in 1983 by Granada Publishing. The aim of the game is to find the hidden treasure before the pirate ship reaches the island. This game has all the ingredients of high adventure. A desert island, peopled by natives, both hostile and friendly. Gold buried at the spot marked X on the map. Quicksands that spell danger to the unlucky treasure seeker, and even Long John Silver's parrot. The game is displayed in colour graphics and has sound effects as well. The treasure is buried at the spot marked X on the map that is briefly flashed on the screen at the start of the game. The path is also indicated. You have to follow the path exactly. If you stray, there are three possible outcomes. If you are lucky, Long John Silver's parrot will guide you back to the path you'll see the parrot hovering over the next position on the path. If you're unlucky, you will encounter hostile natives and will find yourself back on the path three paces back from where you left it. If you are unluckier still, you'll end up in quicksand. This can be a final fate or you may be rescued by a friendly native. If you need to consult the map in order to follow the path, you can type H. When you do this, you'll be shown the map, now also indicating the locations of the quicksands for a short random length of time. However, every time you ask to see the map, the pirate ship comes nearer. If the ship arrives before you find the treasure, you'll be captured. The ship advances anyway, once for every five moves, so you need to be accurate. To move along the path, you use the cursor keys right, left and down. You cannot move backwards. Lovely to type in. Anything entered in graphics mode are entered in square brackets. This means it was an absolute treasure to type in. Let's have a go at Treasure Island. Treasure Island. It's loading. Here is the map. X marks the spot. So roughly remember we have to go forward and we go thank you. So we need to go forward and left, forward and left, forward and right. I can't remember any more, so let's check the map. Okay, you need to go forward twice. There's the pirate ship. First time I saw that I thought it was some kind of scary voodoo mask thing so let's go forward oh every five moves the ship moves forward which can interrupt your flow of thought and then I go forward and right let's check the map okay you see all the treasure marks so i believe i need to go straight south a bit to the left. Ship is getting closer. The colours are done quite effectively, just just spaces, that's all it is. They change the ink. And then do right and right. Oh, that was not good. 
I got it wrong. There was a nasty beep. Okay, so we can see where we are on the map. We're just in from the where the uh, middle of the Pac-Man face is. So from here, I need to go left, right, and then south. Can I get the treasure before I die? Let's go left, right. It's getting closer. It's definitely getting closer. Gotta check the map. Ah, excellent. I need to go right twice. Hopefully I'll get it. If I do, I'll show you death as well. for me. I said one other go, this time I'll be a bit more slapdash. Because it's rather splendid. Okay. So you go south one, then right, then left. I don't need maps. So I need to show you various nice things. Oh! Ship's top left, island top bottom right. So it shifts us back a little bit. Hostile natives. We don't like hostile natives and they do not like us. So every, everywhere you see the green, that is the deadly quicksand. Every five moves, the pirate ship gets ever so slightly closer. That was a bad move. I'm not sure how I meant to get out of there because it's really close to the sea. Follow along John Silver's parrot, okay. It's definitely getting closer. It's a very narrow island. Again, back to the follow the parrot. There's a green for the jungle and yellow for the beach. So let's see what happens if we go just straight south into the quicksand, because we've already seen what happens when you win the game. Ship gets closer. That's a bit of luck. So we've had the parrot, we've had the, the friendly native, but it pushed us back now. Notice on the left you've got the parrot and the native symbol there. Ship is very close. I don't think we're going to make it, even if I do try properly. How close that ship's getting. I think they're going to barbecue me. The map's quite effective. I'm going to get it wrong, because you've already seen me win. And it's always nice to see death states as well as my glorious victories. If you want victories, you just follow one credit classics, not me. He plays proper games and doesn't die. Oh, parts have landed, I've captured another game. Not for the day. I think we've had our fill. Thank you for watching this little, little selection of typing games of a piratical nature. I was actually surprised there aren't that many. There's lots of, of space games and war games and fantasy games, but very few on actual pirate stuff. And strictly speaking, the only two pirate-themed games were the treasure-finding games, which were the two I actually enjoyed the most. Nautical Navigation is actually quite good once you got it working. I actually liked it. Trank's Return had some promise, but it didn't have wind, so it didn't really feel right. What I'll be doing later on is a playthrough of the classic Spectrum game Treasure Island. I would also recommend for your viewing pleasure a video by Nick Jenkin on the game Plunder, where you're a Francis Drake type fighting the Spanish and stealing all their gold. The Jigsaw was one I got in a fate as a kid. I love it. It was, I think it was a BP promotional item to find the treasure of Black Pete. I think it's brilliant. I love it. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.